In a recent video, I took a look at the Nightcore tube, and I really liked it. I liked it so much that I have one of these on my keyring at all times now. And it was suggested I take a look at the Nightcore tip, which is a big brother, and it is a physically much bigger light. In fact, you know what? Let's weigh this. Uh, where's my scales there? Let's weigh them and see how much of a difference there is. Physically, it's over about, about twice the size-ish. Uh, so the original Nightcore tube is 8.9 grams to all intents and purposes. The uh, tip is 23.5 grams. So let's take a look in in ounces. That's uh, approximately 0.8. Let's see if that is zeroing. Yes, it is. It's about 0.8 grams and the original tube is 0.3. So they're not heavy. N neither of them are really heavy. This one feels more like a... Uh, key fob remote type sort of thing. It's it's chunky enough to compare to a, a vehicle key fob remote. Um, the modes. This one has two buttons. The first button just turns it on, and it starts off. Well, it's got a memory, but I'll put it against this uh, card so you can actually see intensity. It starts off with the lowest intensity with the longest battery life. Goes to a higher intensity goes to a higher intensity again, if you press and hold the front button, it goes up to its highest intensity, and that is really very bright. That is extraordinarily bright for such a small light. One other feature, and uh, someone's mentioning that uh, this may be a, have a bug associated with it. People are complaining that it turns on easily in your pocket, and I will say that I've accidentally turned this one on in my pocket as well. But uh, there is a way to lock that out. If you press the front button and then the back button, it gives a brief flash and then it locks out the buttons. And the only way to unlock it then is to do the same again. Hold both buttons down until, oh, it comes back on again. And there may be, and I'll check this out, there may be a slight bug that the software in this... Uh, keeps the processor active is the only thing I can assume that people who say they've locked it off in their pocket and it's it's run the battery flat the only way I can really see it doing that is if the processor keeps running in the background so um this one came from a seller uh, called n power 007 and it costs 23 pounds 99 24 pounds inclusive of shipping which is you know it's not a cheapy. Uh, but it is quite a good little light. So let's uh, open it up. Um, I think I'll use a smaller screwdriver bit for this. And I'll just zoom in. I'll focus onto that and uh, just zoom in just a little bit. So I'm guessing I'll take the back off first, I think. Now, I put this, I actually tested the battery capacity by running this flat repeatedly and then recharging it, and the device I used to monitor it was something more professional. I used a porta -pow. Um and this is a sort of like, it's a uh, meter that, uh, basically, it's a universal amp meter that monitors milliamp hour uh, capacity of things. It can measure up to 50 volts and up to 5 amps, and it logs up to... Uh, 99,999 amp hour. Okay, so it's got lots of uses, and basically speaking, it is basically, 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 basically. Yeah, can I say that more times? It's a, a, an intelligent amp meter, is the best way to describe it. And that suggested that the capacity of the cell in this is approximately um, 500 milliamp hour, which is actually quite uh, impressive. It suggests that maybe. I'm trying to imagine how much. Maybe it's mostly battery inside this. So, four screws out this side, and hopefully this will come off. I've deliberately taken the side off that's a complete opposite from the buttons. Maybe that's the wrong side. Oh, that doesn't feel right. Is this going to come out? Let's try the other side. It's held together by plenty of screws. It claims to be an aluminium casing. It also claims that the, there's a... Uh, what's the... What they say, one of the most impressive things was advanced temperature regulation. Does that mean it's actually monitoring the LED temperature? That would be really good if it was. 
It also says built-in power indicator and then gives a patent number. What the heck is that supposed to mean? It does have a kind of power of charging and uh, end of charge indicator, but sh shines very dimly. It's very hard to see, but it shines dimly through the buttons. Red for charging, green for charged. I'm not sure what they mean by the power indicator. It also claims it's waterproof. Uh, but as it has an open USB port on the side, I'm not overly convinced about that. Oh, that is not... Oh, no, it's moving, it's moving. It's moving. It's glued? Oh, that might be thermally conductive glue. This is a very thin housing. It's, it does appear to be metal. And it's very thin indeed. Uh, there's the two buttons that control it, and there's presumably the LED that uh, shows it's charging. Oh, that's an, a thing I meant to say. Uh, the little, uh, the one I've just lost, the Nightcore tube has a quite endearing feature that uh, if you plug it in while, to charge while it's uh, turned on, it will act as emergency light, and you know, when the power goes off, it will then light up. This one doesn't do that. If you plug it in while it's turned on, it just stays turned on. So what have we got here? Okay, let's try taking this to bits then, shall we? And then I'll... Is this going to come out easily? Oh, it's got two circuit boards. There's a lithium cell. Five hundred milliamp power. So that uh, measured quite accurately then. The main circuit board has what looks like a row of. Uh, let's see if we can get a bit closer to this. It looks like it's got a row of transistors, which I'm guessing might be in parallel. And they'll possibly be switching the LED. It's got a ridiculously sized chip for controlling it. Is that monitoring the charge as well? No, because the circuit board, this circuit board here, looks as though it's got... Um, charge regulation circuitry on it for the, the lithium cell. Right, okay, I'm just going to pause a moment and I'm going to uh, take some pictures of this and analyse it. Well, that's actually quite a sophisticated little thing. It's got two circuit boards. It's got the main circuit board here, which has a processor on it, quite a powerful processor. It's not an expensive processor, but it is powerful. ATL051F3P6. And uh, hold on, I actually printed data sheet off just to give the basics of that. Value line, 8 bits, ultra low power MCU, 8 kilobytes flash, 256 bytes data. It's got just loads of extra facilities in it, including analog to digital converters, which is probably quite important here. I think it is using that. The processor card has these transistors on it, but I think they're just general purpose level shifters because uh, the 14 and 14, they're at PNP by the look of it. 24 is an NPN, not sure what the 21GG is. And this over here, 65ZL or 65ZL, depending where you are in the world. I'm not sure. Could that be a low dropout regulator in some way, though? The voltage from the the, uh, the lithium cell is already pretty close to what the processor is going to run at. Moving on from the processor... Uh, we have the power card, which is the USB connector on it. And on the other side of the USB connector is a uh, small component labelled 55B7, which I looked it up. It's a 4055, which is a very typical um, charging control chip for the lithium cell. The lithium battery itself has a uh, protection circuit built on. I'm just being careful not to short this out here, because I've got some wires off at the moment for reasons that will become apparent later. On the top of it, it gets really quite interesting. I'm not sure what the AEBG is. Um, it's an 8-pin chip. I'm guessing it's a switching regulator, possibly with analog control from here because there's an inductor here, 2.2 microhenry, or it's marked 2R2. And 
Over here, there's a, a small five-pin chip marked 101. And I looked up, uh, I did a search for it, and the closest I could find that it really fits into the description is a ZXCT1010. And this is a, a current sensor. And that ties in because right here is a 0 0.05 ohm resistor. And if this basically buffers up um, the uh, current that's being sensed, the voltage that's being sensed across that resistor, it means it's a very, it means they can use a super low resistor um, and but still get a high enough level signal possibly to feed back to the processor over here. Hmm. Okay. So it's got the current sensor, the low loss current sensor. It's got the inductor. So I'm guessing this is a switching chip. Now, the thing it said there was thermal management. I don't see a temperature sensor in the LED at all. The two wires just go straight to the LED. The one component that was near that housing, the one that's got all the red goon, is the inductor. So I don't see anything here that suggests that there is thermal management as based on temperature. But it's possible that the processor over here uh, knows what temperature that's going to increase up to over time. So that if the unit is used at absolutely full power, it may actually cut that down intensity or uh, guessing it wouldn't probably turn it off. It may just cut it back. I've not tried that. Um, now I've actually pulled the cover off, but cautious about the fact that the aluminium housing is probably providing part of the heat sinking here. So let's guess what the copy will have. The copy will have this classic eight pin chip. Um, everything will be on a little circuit board much, you know, everything could probably be on this circuit board in the inevitable copies that will come out of these and they won't have quite the same control they'll have a resistor in the series of the LED or maybe a different LED and then they'll just be, uh, you know driving it via a transistor from that little 8 pin chip, plus they'd of course have the charge control chip, like because that's what the copy of their other uh, flashlight had, it'll be interesting if I see a copy of this come out um, a cheap copy prefer because I know it's going to be cheap and shitty inside then uh, I'll buy one and we can take a look inside it but it's complex really complex it's like a full-blown computerized controlled uh, you know for the fact it's only got four intensities um, it seems overtly complicated but uh, they really are basically aiming at you know constant current regulation through the LED talking of current let's uh, test the current shall we this is a, I'm not sure that was scrubbing when it was making nasty squeaky noises. Now, some of you might disapprove. I'm going to use a cheapo meter for measuring the current because uh, it's really convenient because this one's got crocodile clips on it. So I've detached a wire off the circuit board and uh, I've added an extra wire. So let's start by measuring the quiescent current. So let's turn this up to high setting about 20 milliamps for a start which is hopefully the quiescent current isn't going to be anywhere near that when you connect this up initially a little LED flashes it flashes three times it might be a software version indicator and the quiescent current in standby mode is 4 microamps which is nothing that's negligible that's actually really good standby current If we s select, uh, turn it on, and uh, I notice every time you click the button, the LED just, oh, the LED's actually blinking repeatedly. The, you can't see that through the case. It's uh, showing, presumably, that it's in the low mode. Um, oh, the LED also, I think, uh, indicates uh, battery capacity. I think it's monitoring the voltage of the cell. But anyway... Uh, if I turn it on, that's it in the low mode, and the current, I'll turn this down to a lower range. Uh, okay, the current in the lowest mode is about 4 milliamps. That's pretty low, that's going to last a long time on the battery. That's going to last uh, over 100 hours, theoretically. If we set it up to the next, uh, oops, current setting. Uh, it goes up to 77 milliamps. And for the higher current settings, I'm going to actually have to disconnect this and go into the 10 amp range. So let's turn that on. So the next setting up, so if the 
uh, settings. Now, I've made a note of that and I've lost that now. Yes, okay. So the low was 4 milliamps, the medium was 77 milliamps, the high is 320 milliamps, and the highest, if I press and hold that button, it goes up to super high output, it goes up to 1.1 amps. That's quite a lot of current. That is really quite a lot of power for an LED. That's pretty much three watts, isn't it? That The thing is incredibly bright. I'm not sure how hot that's going to get. Well, it, it is going to get hot pretty quickly, isn't it? Uh, so the processor may cut that down. I may give that a wee test later on. But now, the other thing we wanted to check was if uh, I put this back to the lower current setting and we put it into the mode where we turn it on. Okay, we, we put this into the point it flashes once to show it's locked out if I hold both the buttons. This is it now in its locked out mode, isn't it? Yep. Yes, it is locked out now. Um, and the quiescent current when it's in locked out mode, when it's locked in your pocket, the buttons are disabled, is for microamps again. So I wonder if that's been a software problem in the past that they've addressed and resolved. It might have been that they kept the processor running and it was, you know, drawing a steady few milliamps in, in normal operation. Um, so um, it's quite an impressive little thing, really. It's quite nicely made. It's quite robust. It's uh, nice that they've laid the laid it out into the form of the processor card and then the sort of power handling card. I wish I knew what those components were. Those, you know, those erroneous ones that I couldn't actually really trace the A E B G uh, and so on. But, um, yeah, it's a interesting flashlight. It's really quite interesting indeed. Uh, can I think of anything really else to add to this? I will say that given the choice of car and the two with me, I would still go for the tube because it's so much, it, you know, it's not heavy, but it's it's so much lighter than this. And more importantly, it's much thinner. And although it's got a much lower intensity and battery life, it just means that, you know, the less stuff you've got in your pockets, the better, the less clutter. But, um, it's uh, still very impressive. For su certain applications, this would be a really, really good flashlight. Okay, I've sussed out how they're doing thermal management here. If you put it up to the 3 watt setting when it's typically around about sort of 900 milliamps to an amp or more, then it holds that for about 25 seconds and then very subtly, and it's about to do it, it will start creeping the intensity back. If you watch the current display here, you'll see it just suddenly starts nudging down slowly. And it's so imperceivable. It's so subtle that you don't even realise it's happening. It goes from the sort of 3 watt setting and it'll wind itself back down to about the 300 milliamp setting, which is its normal high setting, which is about 1 watt dissipation from the LED. And that appears to be how it's doing its thermal management. And if you then need an extra boost of light, you can press it and it will go up to the higher level again. But after that time delay, it will just nudge itself back to a more sensible level. So that's a, quite an interesting technique to get around the risk of it overheating at the higher power.